All right, so let's get it started. So does anybody have any questions so far before the quiz or anything uh, concerning you or any problem that you don't understand and you need more clarification? Okay, so let's have our uh, 30 minutes about a new topic. So our new topic today is a new mentality to solve the kinetic problems. And this uh, will be based on impulse and uh, momentum. So let's right now see, so can you guys uh, mute yourselves? Like, just like, uh, so I, you can't hear me. Okay, so uh, if we look back at the uh, Newton second equation, which has the sum of forces equal to mass multiplied by the a vector. So this is the equation that we have been using over the last couple of weeks uh, to solve problems in a chapter 13 and also chapter uh, 14. So we have the acceleration equal to the time rate of change of the velocity, dv dt. We'll plug this into this equation. So this will have the sum of forces will be equal to the mass multiplied by the dv dt. Okay. And if we get this dt here, so we will have the sum of the forces multiplied by dt will be equal to m dv. And if we integrate the left and right side, and when we integrate the left side, we have dt, so the uh, upper and lower bound of the integration will be t1 and t2. And the right side we are integrating with respect to dv, so this will be here v1 and v2. And this will give us that the, um, the integration over the time of the sum of the forces multiplied by dt will be equal. We know that the mass is constant. In some problems, the mass could not be constant, just like to be careful. The mass like, <clears throat> <clears throat> For example, if you have a mountain, this mountain like this, and you have a rock here or a limestone, and this limestone is moving down and keep losing some of its part and losing some mass to be something like this as soon as it gets down. So sometimes mass could be function of T in some problems. You might have a truck and this truck is have a load of stones and this is stones a fly or limestones and when it flies keep losing some mass and the mass is changing over uh, the time. So the mass is function of time. Just like to let you know, I don't think that we might have this kind of problems and most of the masses during this course will be uh, constant. So we can get the mass outside of the integration and this could be integrated from V1 to V2, and we have dV here, and this will be equal to m V2 minus V1. So the final equation of the impulse and momentum will be the integration over T1, T2 here, the sum of the forces multiplied by dT will be equal to m V2 minus m V1. So this is the final equation of the impulse and momentum. So let's see what terms are the impulse and what terms are the uh, momentum. So this term, the force over the time, let's assume that you have a hammer and this hammer will hit something here. 
and the hit has a force and this force was applied over time t. So what we call this is just impulse. And so this term is called impulse and this term is called the change in the linear momentum. In the, okay. <clears throat> All right, so, and this equation is a vector equation. So I forgot to put the vectors over the velocity v1 and the vector over the velocity. T2. So this is a vector equation which can be split into x and y direction. So you can have the sum of forces in x direction. Uh, integrated with respect to t and you have v2 in the x direction and v1 in the x direction and similarly you can do this in the uh, y direction and when i say x and y direction so let's clean this area Okay, so if we have a curve like this and our particle at T1 is here and T2 is here. So at T1, if we put the X, Y direction, so the X will be this way and the Y will be this way. Similarly here, you will have X and you will have Y so the direction of x and y is not a changing over the time, but if you solve it in the tangent normal direction, so it will be something like that. So you will have the tangent this way and the normal this way. So here's the tangent, here's the normal. If you came here, the tangent will be this way and the normal will be this way. So it's better to use the X, uh, Y coordinate system into splitting this function. And let's see a problem that um, has a, a direct application on the uh, impulse and momentum. So this problem, it says that you have a block, it has a weight of 50 pounds and moves down a slope with uh, V node is equal to three feet per second and is resistant is resisted by a kinetic energy and mu k uh, is resisted by kinetic friction and mu k is 0.3 and the tension here is equal to b and b equal 10 multiplied by the time so the b is changing over the time so you can translate this into this equation that you, when you integrate this you have t so you will have to integrate t with respect to time and where time is in second is added for um Tension, yeah, is added for two seconds. So it gives you the upper limit. So from zero up to two seconds, find the final velocity. So you are given the initial velocity and you are asked for the final velocity. So we have V1 and we need to get V2 and we have almost all of the forces acting on this body. So let's draw a free body diagram. So here is our slope with angle 30 degree. And here is our body and the body has a weight W <clears throat> like this and there will be a normal force perpendicular to the surface like that and assuming this body is moving in this direction so we will be having a friction FF like this 
And what else, what other forces is missing? Does anybody know? Uh, the pull force. Okay. And uh, is it B or uh, something else? P, the tension. Yeah. But here you have B and also you have B here. So you have to be because you are pulling here with B and the other rope in the other side has other B. So this pulley doubled the uh, forces on the uh, body. So you will have two B going this way. So let's uh, first, so let's put it in here. you are given that B is equal to 10 T and we have the general equation of the impulse and momentum, which is equal to the sum of the forces DT will equal to V2 minus MV1. And let's solve this equation into Y direction. So we didn't set the, the axes, so let's draw Here's our body. And let's assume that the x direction is this way and the y direction is this way. And the body is moving. We know that the body is moving this way. So this is the MA, but this is, doesn't matter because we will not be using the, uh, the force and acceleration. We just right now, we know the x. And actually we know that there is a V note so that's what matter. We have V node in this direction equal to three feet per second. All right, so let's solve in Y direction. So let's put Y, you can start X or Y, whatever you like. So in Y direction, you will have the sum of the forces and Y direction DT will be equal from T1 to T2 will be equal to MV2 in Y direction minus MV1 in Y uh, direction. So let's see what forces that we have in Y direction. We have the normal force totally in Y direction and, 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 and it's in the positive Y. And we have a component of the weight. We have these angles 30 in negative Y direction. So Let's put them here. So from zero up to two seconds, we have N minus W cosine 30. All of these have the T outside and this will be equal to the mass. So the 50 bound is weight. So when, when you are given the problem bounds, because this is 50, so the mass is equal to 50 over 32.2 and the unit of this is a slug. So this will be 50 over 32.2 and V2 in Y directions, there is not any V in the Y direction because I, I incline the axes to be in the same direction of V node. So VY2 is equal to zero and also will have 50 over 32.2 multiplied by zero. So this will give you an equation similar to the uh, Newtonian kinetics because all this part is equal to zero. And when you integrate this part, you will have T outside and you can divide over T and you will end up with that normal force minus W cosine 30 will be equal to zero. And you can get N equal to 50 cosine 30 and this will give you 34.3 pound. So this is the normal force. So let's solve the uh, the uh, the uh, impulse and momentum equation in x direction. So in x direction, we will integrate also from t1 to t2, and we will have to put the sum of fx dt will be equal to m v2x minus mv1x. 
And the integration will be from zero to two seconds because it's given up to two seconds. And the forces in the x direction is the friction. And right now we can get the friction from this equation. So F of friction will be equal to mu kinetic multiplied by N. And this will give us that the F of friction mu kinetic is 0.3. And uh, okay, 0.3 multiplied by 34. 0.3 and then you can get the F friction. And what else we have in X direction? So this the F friction, the F friction is in positive X because it's in the same direction, and the component of the weight is in negative X. So we will have here um, F friction minus W sine theta and do we have any forces in the x direction yes we have 2b in an, in the negative x direction and we have b is equal to 10t so it will be negative 2 multiplied by 10t all of these integrated with respect to time t so let's see what we have in the right hand side. We have the mass <clears throat> 50 over 32.2 V2x, which is the required in this problem, minus 50 over 32.2 multiplied by V1x. So the V1x is the V node here. And from the signs, X is going in this direction and the V is going in this direction. So this will be negative three. And right now we can integrate this equation. So uh, finally, let's put some numbers here. So from zero up to two, we will have 0.3 multiplied by 34.3. So this is the friction plus, uh, sorry, minus W, which is 50 pound sine 30 minus 20. T. All of this integrated with respect to t, so this will be constants, this is two term, and when you integrate the 20 t, it will be 10 t square, and this will be, and you will have the same term, 50 over 32.2 v2x minus 50 over 32.2 multiplied by negative three. So when you integrate this, it will give you negative 12.01 t because this will give you a constant and when you integrate this constant it will have t outside and then you will have negative 10 t squared the integration of this part and you will have to substitute in this term from zero up to two and here you can have 50 32.2 you can take it as a common factor and then you will have v2x plus three when you multiply the negative with this negative. And when you substitute here from with zero equal to like, you will put 12.01 multiplied by two minus 10 multiplied by two square. And when you put zero here, so all of these will be uh, equal to zero. And then you have 50 and actually can put this into parentheses and get this in the other side, it will be 32.2 over 50. And then you put the negative three, this will give you the V2X. And the V2X will be equal to negative 44.3 feet per second. And that makes sense that it's negative because we know this body is moving in this direction and the x-axis in this direction. But if you assumed from first that the x-axis is in this direction, so you will get the velocity is positive and you will have to put v-note uh, as a positive uh, quantity. Does anybody have any question in solving the impulse and momentum uh, problems? <clears throat> Does anything uh, look unclear? So just like we did simple thing, like uh, we have from before sum of fx equal the mass multiplied the acceleration. Right now we got the t, uh, the dt here 
and we have it a mass multiplied by uh, velocity. So, so this is the concept of impulse and the momentum. So nobody have any question? Okay, so just like uh, want to make sure that, uh, because many of you in the homeworks uh, did this mistake and I hope you don't do it uh, in future, either in the quizzes or the final exams. Most of you don't know how to the differentiate r equal e to the power theta with respect to t. So when you are asked to differentiate this with respect to t, you make it wrong. And you confused between differentiating this with respect to the same variable in the problem. So you do this, but don't do that. Like, I mean, like, that's what you do, but this is what is required. We need r dot, not dr d theta. So we need it here, we need r dot. So, so let's just like uh, compare between uh, the derivative of post terms. Like if you, here is r equal to e to the power theta, and you are asked, here is the differentiation dr dt, and here is the differentiation dr d theta. And dr dt is equal to r dot, but this is not r dot, this is dr d theta. So let's differentiate the r d theta first. So if you differentiate this term with respect to theta, it will give you a theta. It's the same term because when you differentiate d theta, it will give you one and you will put one here. But if you differentiate this with respect to t, it will give you theta dot a to the power theta, because if you differentiate theta with respect to t, it will give you c the dot and you will put the c the dot here. So this is how we can differentiate this term. It's completely different with uh, differentiating this term with respect to uh, theta. If you will differentiate this term one more time, so you will have d square r dt square, which is r double dot. So this will be the derivative of the verse term, which will be theta double dot <clears throat> multiplied by a theta. The derivative of the verse multiplied by the second plus the derivative of the second a theta with respect to t, which we just differentiated, it will be theta dot a theta. So when you differentiate a theta with respect to t, it will give you theta dot down here and you will have this multiplied by a theta. So this is the derivative of the second term. And you multiply the second term by the first term, theta dot. So this will give you theta double dot a theta, this term. And this term will be theta dot square a theta. But here, if you want to get the second derivative of r with respect to theta, not t. So here is the difference. Here is time and here is theta this will give you a theta, still a theta, doesn't it change? Because when you differentiate theta, it will be one and the one will put here, so it will be a theta. And similarly, if you are differentiating r equal to a multiply uh, to the power one plus two theta square, if you differentiate this term with respect to t, dr dt, so we will get the derivative of this part with respect to t. So the derivative of this part with respect to t, it will be the derivative of the, the whole thing. It will be zero plus the derivative of this part, it will be four theta and all this part will be multiplied by d theta dt, theta dot. And then you will put e as it is, one plus two theta squared. So this is from the first principles of the uh, differentiation. And uh, so this is the derivative of this part, but if we are differentiating this dr with respect to theta, 
So it will be the derivative of this part zero plus four theta, and we don't have to put theta dot outside. So because we we are not differentiating with respect to time, we are differentiating with respect to theta. And when you have d theta over d theta, it will be one. But when we have d theta over dt, it will be theta dot. So there is no theta dot here. And then you put e one plus two theta square. So this is how uh, you can make this derivative. Does anybody have any question on, on getting these derivatives? All right, guys, so uh, we'll give you some time. Uh, the quiz will start in, in five minutes. Uh, please don't forget to uh, uh, upload your answers, uh, scan the, uh, the problem that you solve it so you can get the partial credit for if you didn't get the, uh, uh, actually, uh, if you get it right or you didn't get it right. So you will, uh, the partial credit is 10 points and it is required. Even if you uh, guess or speculate and put any answer and you didn't have your uh, uh, partial credit, you will lose 10 points. So please uh, upload your answers as a PDF. All right, guys, uh, good luck with the quiz and see you next week. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Professor.